So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and today I hope you have a lot of patience if you're going to watch this video because it's a swarm install in real time. And what's different about it? Well, I'm going to show you how I install a swarm without opening the receiving hive. That's the nucleus hive sitting top right there, five frame deep. I went and collected a swarm from about a mile up the road from one of my neighbors. I transported it in this hive butler in what else? A butterfly net. 100% cotton commercial grade butterfly net. All I did was shake them off the branch of a blueberry bush into this net and then I dropped the net into the hive butler tote, put the lid on and drove it home. So if you're in a hurry, this is not your video. This is the complete install in real time. So just as I said before, I'm not gonna open the hive and shake them in as I normally would. Instead, this is what I'm gonna do. Just gonna put the butterfly net right up against the front. Now I wish this nucleus hive base had a landing board so I could rest it on there because I'm hand holding this for the whole thing. That's right, this video is 44 minutes long. I apologize for the wind that picked up all of a sudden, but that will soon pass. What I wanted to see, because I don't really care, I mean, what's the worst that could happen? They fly away, they go somewhere else. I have 30 colonies in this apiary right now. We're in the western field. And uh, I just want to see if I can get them to walk in and explore it on their own. And then if they like it, to see if the rest of the bees in this bag of bees will just go in. Now, it has drawn comb inside. There's nothing in the comb. There's no feeder on this box. There are five deep standard Langstroth frames. This particular nucleus hive has this entrance hole in the front. It has a fixed permanent bottom attached to it, so no removable bottom board. I would much prefer that it did, but this is one I just had in storage because I got a swarm call and I thought, hmm, opportunity to play around and look what they're doing. They're going in. Now the drawn comb that's in here has been used before, so it smells like all the right things. Like another colony has lived there before. And if we get a favorable response from the first bees that go in, I expect that they'll come back out, raise their abdomens, open their Nazanoff's glands, and start fanning. And then we'll watch the rest of the bees come up and out of this cotton bag. Now another cool part of this is, there's a lot of bees in here. I wouldn't say this is a large swarm, intermediate, maybe three pounds max. And so just enough to fill this small nucleus hive. But I thought that this would be, give me a great opportunity to spot the queen, sit around, listen to nature, watch the bees walk in for however long it takes. And here's the good news, look what's happening already. See the Nasanoff's glands that are opening up and they're lining up one after another, which means they're fanning down into the cotton butterfly net. So what'll that do? Well, that'll encourage the rest of them to move up. Now initially, you would think that they're doing that because the queen is inside. If she is, there's more than one queen with this colony and I did not see the queen go up, did you? because we showed it from the very beginning. We showed it as soon as I put the net up against the wall and I didn't see the queen. Now queens are sneaky, I'll give them that. Sometimes when there's a cluster of bees as there is right now at the entrance, the queen will scoot up underneath all of them and get in there. And I have another camera with me, of course. If I spot the queen, I will cut in and show you the queen. So there she actually went, lower left corner. You might have just missed it. She's on the net, right under my name there. And uh, she went down. So that's interesting. Now I think they're just claiming the space. So the workers are moved in, they want it, and they're clustering on the outside of the entrance. Fanning, and you can see the activity's picking up. There's a lot of them moving in there. That's encouraging, but it's also risky. The queen's not in there yet. She's down below there. And uh, she could go anywhere at any time. So she's obviously not the leader. The other bees here are the leaders when it comes to swarming and where they're going to go. So they're fanning her 
sent around, but they must have collected it from her while they were clustered in their swarm. So we're just going to watch them, and if I can get a good shot, I'm going to hold the other camera over the queen, and we're going to get a look, good look at her. And uh, she's not one of mine, so from somebody else. And you see my blue glove there. I'm wearing nitrile gloves. And... Uh, holding the other camera with that so that I can scan around if I find something worth sharing I'll overlay it with the space video so this is a swarmy year and uh, right now at uh, the shooting of this was just three days ago today is June the 1st so I'm hoping they're running out of their propensity to swarm people are collecting swarms everywhere not just here and I have not responded to any calls for other people other than this one because the owner of the house is a friend and he had bees on a blueberry bush which put him right at chest height which means all I had to do was walk over there shake him into this butterfly net put the butterfly net in the hive tote and bring him home now this is looking down into the net we have nice raking light here and there's that big fat queen look at her now all my queens are dark this one has a really bright orange golden abdomen not only that she doesn't look like a virgin which is why she's probably attracted all of these workers with her and uh, she is scooting under them but she makes lots of appearances and we're going to find out this queen is really pretty fickle now you see some drones here with them people always ask what comes with the uh, swarm old bees young bees intermediate aged bees bees with pollen on them and the answer is yes all different ages of bees come with them yes drones come with them even though the queen is mated and there's no use for them other than that they're going to pirate resources off of these nurse bees here and yes some nurse bees even go and you can kind of gauge that when you look at the bees and see how fuzzy they are how new they are how young they look freshly out of their pupa cells and uh, they're kind of clueless. They just follow the others around. And this is why they just hang on the net and wait for that guaranteed scent. And then they follow the pheromone trail up and into the hive. But if you look at the entrance, they're not all going in. They're certainly clustering around it. And they're gathering in a nice thick mass. But uh, I'd like to see the outside of the hive clear right up. It'd be great if they actually went inside. That's better to me, although there is a definite flow going in, but they're also coming back out. That makes it kind of touch and go. But we see that the activity down in the net is picking up also. More bees are moving up. So that's a good flurry of activity. They're all full. They all look healthy. So I don't know whose bees they were, but it looks like they were well cared for. And uh, they've lost them now. I have nothing to lose by risking them installing themselves or not. Now here's the other end of it. If I shake them into the hive and then I close the lid on them and I force them to stay there, I don't know that they feel like they chose the space where here all they did was have the opportunity to move in and they did. So we'll take another look down here and there's the queen dead center. Nice and big cruising over the surface checking in with all her faithful workers there and uh, she does pause and get fed every now and again so they are taking care of her now she should be on the light side so she could have flown there are lots of beekeepers around me now right across the road there's another one a mile up the road there's a beekeeper to the southeast of me there's a beekeeper to the northeast of me and there's another one due west and there's another one uh, northwest so you know, we can see a lot of different genetics out here. Hopefully my bees have sent out lots of drones. And I'd like to see my own genetics cycled right back to me because this year has been really, really good. We did have a mild winter and right now we're in kind of a, a dry spell. We don't have any rain even in the forecast until next week. Things are drying out. Uh, it looks like they're feeding on ground ivy right now. And uh, we've also seen them on white clover. So the white clover is blooming and we're in a nectar flow. So it's strong. 
Uh, hives have to be supered. In fact, we'll be supering today and tomorrow and over the weekend. So these are busy times and uh, they're lucking out. The other thing is you might wonder about my Varroa mite count. Very low and uh, it's another reason why I put this box down in my lower field. I don't necessarily want them mixing it up with my other bees until I know uh, what their Varroa mite levels are. So how could I control that? Well, we know they're moving in here. And uh, by the time they start bringing in pollen, and by the time they set up shop, and the queen's laying, and by the time they start to cap their larvae and put them in the pupa state, it'll be around the ninth day. And uh, so before that, if I determine that they have varroa mites on them, we'll treat them with oxalic acid vaporization. And there goes the queen. She's right in the center. Kind of annoying. She tools all over. I would really like it if she just went straight in. Makes sense. You would think the queen would go in, that that would protect her. Let's get another look at her here with the other camera. So the entrance is really jammed. Lots of activity there. And there's the queen top right, scooting across just out of frame. And then she disappears into the crowd. It's a good way to scan the bees and kind of train your eye too. And again, I'm seeing the same queen over and over unless she has an identical twin that's also going in and out of the hive. But I think it's just one. And I think her, the fact that she's outside is the reason why this cluster stays so large on the outside of the entrance because she hasn't made up her mind whether or not she approves of the hive that they've chosen for her. I mean, she could reject everybody. She could leave and fall on the ground or fly away and land on some nearby fence or something. Anything's possible. Now, if you wanted the sure thing, of course, hive them up, shake them in, install them all. There's the queen again, dead center. You can see her scooting into the thicket there. She's very distinctive. She's surfing over the top. This gives you a great opportunity just to sit and stare at them and see what the behavior is. It also trains your eye to see that queen over and over again. I could collect her and mark her thorax and keep track of her, but actually I don't know that she's decided to stay yet. So no reason to do that. The other thing is I don't know if I'm gonna claim this queen. All the others are being marked red this year. And I do recommend marking your queens so let's look around here, another close-up. And that's the control ring here for the entrance. This nucleus hive was purchased from Better Bee, and the person that uh, used to make them for them, I guess, passed away. So you don't see this design anymore on their website. And I have them in reserve because I want a lot of resource hives, a lot of nukes this year. And uh, if your nucleus hives are healthy and uh, there's no reason not to collect them, let them set up shop. We're talking about the 1st of June. Uh, you could get a healthy nucleus hive going and then sell it to somebody. So I wish I had some kind of bracket that would support the net here so I would have hands free as it is I'm photographing with one hand and holding the net with the other didn't plan ahead much although I do have a go kit so I could just grab everything and head out and collect the swarm that's the other thing this year the swarms when they're clustered on trees and fence posts and sides of people's homes and things like that don't seem to be sticking around long. They seem to have lots of options and as soon as someone sends in a swarm call, out they go. So there are lots of sayings about the value of a swarm. Swarm in May, worth a load of hay. Swarm in June, worth a silver spoon. Swarm in July, let them fly. There's the queen right on the right there, just at the bottom of the hive tooling up. She's just crossing over the edge of that uh, control wheel. And again, she's scooting up under all of the bees that are on the front there. You'd think she'd go in, but no. She's not going in yet. 
So, but I'm going to take the other camera and give you a closer look at her here in a second. Now, the other thing you might wonder, am I going to put syrup on this hive? I don't think I will. We have lots of uh, all the combs drawn inside this hive. Uh, so they don't have to use resources to do that. They can go into foraging right away. We're in a nectar flow. I don't need to boost that. And we know the queen has been up on the face of the hive now. So looking down here, I'm just kind of showing you what the behavior is of uh, the bees that are still down in the net. And boy, what a frustrating queen. I just wanted to go in. Where's the cappuccino when you need one? So the other thing is even the birds are doing well this year. The blue birds are all, they've all finished. They've fledged their first batch of young. And the good news about bluebirds is the young from the first batch stick around and help with the next batch. So they've already spread out and taken over other boxes. Tree swallows are here. Looks like the queen is right up at the top center, about the 12 o'clock position, dropping down. In the middle there, trying to bury herself again, doing everything except going through the entrance. Now she's in the center of the frame. Going down, of course, where does she go? Right back down into the net. The other thing is, this is a chance, you know, you can look over your bees. You can use this install method with a package if you wanted to. You would install your queen inside the hive. Then just open the package and hold it up to the entrance and let them all walk in. When they do that, of course, any dead bees that were in a package that was mailed to you wouldn't be dropped inside the hive for the bees to clean up. You can also set up a ramp, drop them on a ramp in front, let them walk in. It is important that it has physical contact with the entrance. They tend to balk at any kind of air gap. So they're all fanning and of course we know the queen is just tooling around, making up her mind. And we went into winter with 22 colonies. We lost two over winter, and now we're up to 30, of course, because of swarms and splits and everything else that makes an apiary too large. And they are drawing out comb. This is throughout the hives. Uh, observation hives are drawing comb. They're capping honey. And there's our queen again, all the way back down in the net. The other thing that's curious about her is they're not making a fuss about her. They're not chasing her off, but uh, they don't seem surprised at all when the queen tools by. You would think they would be a little bit excited, or they would surround her, or they would travel with her, and try to feed her, or do something, and groom her, but they don't seem to pay that much attention. Now, if that were a virgin queen, you could expect her to look really small. And uh, this one looks like she's almost actually too big to even fly. But she did. She's very conspicuous. She also seems to have difficulty maybe finding the entrance. I don't know what she's doing. If they were rejecting her, they would be biting at her and uh, trying to drive her off. They would bite at her wings. They would bite at her feet. But instead, every so often, they'll pause and some bee will feed her. And uh, she's tooling around trying to find the entrance, it seems. That would make my day if she went in. I mean, they're looking at her. They're touching her with their antennae. And uh, the hole is just a little to her left. And the bees on the outside are parked. That's not a good sign. See how they're just... Uh, gripping on the surface and piling one another onto each other. I've seen it before where the bees have actually blocked the entrance to a box and prevented the queen and any other bees from getting in. 
So it's starting to look a little bit like that. So it's kind of up to the queen whether she wants to squeeze through everyone and go through that hole that's on the left. Now I don't want to spoil it for you and tell you what happens. These are just still going in at the same time clustering on the front. Sometimes you'll have half the bees move into a hive and then you'll see another cluster on the outside of the hive that just doesn't seem to want to go in and join the others. Now when that happens, I am 90% sure, let me change that, I'm 99% sure that you have two queens. If they won't all go in together and they split up into two separate groups, one goes in, the rest remain either in the bag or in your box or on the front of the hive without going in, you need to check them out for that queen. Another thought crossed my mind while I was watching them do this. What if I just grabbed the queen, collected her, and put her in a queen cage? Would their behavior be different? Would I lose them? Would they get really excited and start skittering around looking for her? That would tell me then that there is only one queen. She's dead center again, right at the top edge of the net. She just disappeared underneath the bees. I'm trying to point her out here with my finger. She's the artful dodger, moving in and out. So anyway, when they form separate clusters or won't completely go into the hive, uh, you may have multiple queens, particularly when it's a swarm that you've collected somewhere. Swarms tend to congregate together, and uh, multiple queens can be found together. There's the queen right there. Just in case you were missing her, I thought I needed to point that out. Right over the entrance. Just go in. That's all I need. Now what would happen if you just grabbed the queen, there she is dead center, and removed her, put her in a little queen cage and stuck her in your pocket, or put her in the shade somewhere where the other bees can't find her, and let's say there's no other queen around, where would they go? These cannot return to their original hive. Why? Because they used a vehicle, I went and collected them from somewhere else and brought them here. Now, if they were from my own apiary, I could collect this queen, put her in a cage, remove her, and then of course all these workers would go back to the hive that they came out of because they're familiar with the terrain, they know the environment, and they know where they came from, and they would just go back in the absence of the queen's pheromone. But because I brought these in, uh, they're kind of stuck here, which is also why probably they were more prone to go right into the hive for me. Now this hive won't stay uh, adequate for them for very long. There it goes the queen straight down six o'clock position. So anyway, um, once they occupy the hive and they start doing their foraging and they start bringing in their resources, I'm gonna have to keep an eye on it because within a week or two, they will fill up all five frames, a swarm this size would this time of year, and I'll have to super it fairly quickly. So once they're using those, there's the queen right at the bottom center. She just went under the bees. So um, I don't need to feed them. They're going to get the resources they need. They're going to grow on their own. I will super this colony within two weeks, which means we'll have five frames over five, so the equivalent of a deep. There's the queen again. Point her out there. And uh, this is a long, boring game at this point. 24 minutes in. Most of the bees have gone in. A bunch of them have decided to wait outside because they want to wait and see what the queen's going to do. Now the other question might be, would you treat them for varroa destructor mites if uh, they don't have any? Now a colony like this, I will do a count at the... Uh, one week mark and we'll use the dry powdered sugar shake method there's queen again right in the middle of your screen she's right next to the entrance 
They're grooming her a little bit. Uh, they probably are wondering what she's up to. They probably want her to approve of this residence. It's a great opportunity to just look her over. She's got all her parts. Her wings are in great shape. She has all of her feet. Her antennae are in good shape. Her abdomen is nice and full. She's not old and worn out. She looks nice and clean. And uh, lots of hair on her legs. She seems to be grooming a little bit. I don't know what she's doing here. And the entrance to the hive is just an inch or two to our left. Look at these bees just hanging out there. They don't even realize they're in the presence of the queen. She's just scooting around. Now she's headed in the right direction. Now again, remember, they could block her. They can keep her from getting in. If they decide they don't want her to, if they don't want this to be the hive that they want to reside in, she's getting dangerously close to the entrance. She could be making a decision. And she's in. She went in the entrance. Now, does that mean she's going to stay in there? We don't know, but we should see a change on the surface now. And uh, the rest of the bees should stop with this indecisive congregating on the front of the hive. They should all move inside now. So we're 27 minutes in. We have quite a while left. And uh, now we should see a change in the bees that are around. She's not outside anymore. And the rest of them should increase their fanning activity. And those that are lounging on the surface should move right in. It is 82 degrees Fahrenheit. No rain, no clouds. Moderate wind, three to five miles an hour. Dew point is very low. The relative humidity is uh 40 percent right now so it's very dry which means that the other colonies are using lots of water to keep their brood humid and i think we are seeing a shift here i think some of these idle bees on the front are deciding to go in and if i can get most of them off of my net i'll be able to take the net away I would really like it if the queen did not come back out. I was asked if I do any grafting of uh, larvae to make queens, and I don't. I find a colony that has uh, recently swarmed, like the day of the swarm go into that colony and pull frames with queen cells on them that are nice and fully developed and I create nukes that way and I just let them finish those off they will emerge from their queen cells and they'll fly out of course and mate there are drones everywhere this year and we've had really good luck no colony has been queenless yet and that includes those that we've just uh, transferred queen cells into. They've already flown, made it come back, and uh, are laying eggs. And this is a prime time of year to do it. 
uh, with the climate the way it is, uh, with the forage the way it is, you can actually see some surplus honey even on some of these May swarms. And they are starting to move up from the bottom here out of the net into the hive even though it kind of looks static when you look at the face of it they're moving in and entering the hive under the cluster that's on the surface which is kind of interesting kind of an undercurrent of bees now the other thing we know is um, bees that are flying around foraging in this area when they have all of this pheromone in the air from this queen we could have foragers that are unrelated to this colony of bees just flying in and joining up. I don't know why they do that, but uh, they can certainly leave their parent colony and just find it convenient to join another colony, especially when they're in a swarm mode. Uh, this is why swarms sometimes when they're parked in a branch continue to grow. Bees from other colonies just add to it. I'm not overly excited when I see drones show up and join them, but it is interesting when I see other workers join them. And you could work that out by weighing the bees that you have, and then of course uh, weighing them when they occupy the hive, and then see if it gains weight. Now the noisy bees that you hear flying through, those are drones, of course. They make the most noise. Droning in. And this hive stand here is just iron tea posts. We have those U-bolts and then of course uh, metal electrical conduit is what they're supported on.
And in the background is just a medium super that was put out after honey was harvested from it for the bees to clean up. It's been cleaned up. I don't think we're at risk of any robbing going on this time of year. And we have an insulated cover, R10, on this hive. Two inch rigid foam board. Just has an insulation cap on top. And in the future, I would like all of my nucleus hives uh, to have screen bottom boards enclosed with removable trays. But since I already have these in storage, I might as well use them. And they are clearing up as you can see they're not covering that bottom board anymore the face of the hive is thinning down so I think we've got ourselves a one queen swarm I figured I would stress the bees in the bag a little bit by removing them and then we bring them back together and look they instantly start fanning again and communicating with pheromone and now they seem interested in coming out of the bag and going up into the hive. Most beekeepers would not be installing bees this way. I completely understand why your time's valuable. But I just like to sit and look at them, see what they do. You never know, I might see something new or fascinating by letting them go in this way. And what else would you do? I don't know, make a YouTube video for others that like to sit and stare at things for long periods of time. Listening to the bees. Watching things go right. I tried to install a queen in a hive last year in a nucleus hive and she just kept coming out and refused to stay. And you might be wondering the color of this hive. Why is it that color of brown? What did I do? I put that in eco wood. It has no other treatment, no other finish. Trying to shake the bag there a little bit. Get them agitated. Why would they want to stay in the bag when they can get into a nice stuffy five frame deep box on a nice sunny 81, 82 degree day? That's where they need to be.
And I shake that little handful out. See what they do. See where they go. Isn't a fair amount in the air for them to find their way anywhere. It is windy. Arm was getting tired, of course, holding them there for 40 minutes. And there they go, they're landing on the front of the hive. That's handy. And I would expect them to finish moving in overnight, so we'll follow up and see what they're doing. So here we are an hour later. They're not showing any signs of leaving, that's the good news. Some are hovering around in front doing orientation flights or little figure eights and looking around. Everything is new to them. And here we are the day after. So, business as usual. They're in, they're doing housekeeping. And the good part is they're also bringing in pollen already. So I think we saddled them. Nobody's hanging out on the front. Of course, this is early in the morning. And I would say it's safe to say they claimed this hive as their own. There goes a nice fat forager with pollen. And then just to be sure, I went out again on June 1st. And we're going to see what they're doing, but I'll spoil it for you. They're doing great. They're still in there. They're foraging. They're doing everything they're supposed to do. Thanks for watching. <music>